The Lord be with you. Beloved in Christ, we come together to offer to Almighty God our worship and praise and thanksgiving, to confess our sins and to receive God's forgiveness, to hear his holy word proclaimed, to bring before him our needs and the needs of the world, and to pray that in the power of his Spirit we may serve him and know the greatness of his love. Begotten from the dead, thou alone O strong defender, liftest up thy people's head. Alleluia, Alleluia, Jesus, true and living bread. Before face descend and pray. Lest we fail to know thee now, hear our deepest love which pain we in loving reverence vow. Alleluia, Alleluia, thou art he we ask but now. Great High Priest of our profession, through the veil thou went to steam. By thy mighty intercession, grace and peace for us to win. Alleluia, Alleluia, only sacrifice for sin. Thy departing earthly manner Stricken rock with streaming side, heaven and earth with one hosanna, worship thee the Lamb that died. Alleluia, Alleluia, risen, ascended, Let us confess our sins to God our Father. Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault, by what we have done and by what we have failed to do. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. May Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. As an act of praise and thanksgiving to God, we'll say together the words of the canticle, Glory and Honour. Glory and honour and power are yours by right, O Lord our God. For you created all things, and by your will they have their being. Glory and honour and power are yours by right, O Lamb for us slain. For by your blood you ransomed us for God, from every race and language, from every people and nation. To make us a kingdom of priests, to stand and serve before our God, to him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb, 
be praise and honour, glory and might, for ever and ever. Amen. Our Bible reading today comes from the first chapter of the Acts of the Apostles. Luke tells the story of Jesus' ascension into heaven. Luke writes, In my former book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus began to do and to teach until the day he was taken up to heaven after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles he had chosen. After his suffering, he showed himself to those men and gave many convincing proofs that he was alive. He appeared to them over a period of 40 days and spoke about the kingdom of God. On one occasion, while he was eating with them, he gave them this command. Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptised with water, but in a few days you will be baptised with the Holy Spirit. So when they met together, they asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, it is not for you to know the times or the dates the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. After he had said this, he was taken up before their very eyes, and a cloud hid him from their sight. They were looking intently up into the sky as he was going, when suddenly two men dressed in white stood beside them. Men of Galilee, they said, why do you stand here looking into the sky? This same Jesus, who has been taken from you into heaven, will come back in the same way you have seen him go into heaven. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the hill called the Mount of Olives, a Sabbath day's walk from the city. When they arrived, they went upstairs to the room where they were staying. Those present were Peter, John, James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James son of Alphaeus, and Simon the Zealot, and Judas son of James. They all joined together constantly in prayer, and with the women, and Mary the mother of Jesus, and with his brothers. I wonder, did you hear the story about the large hole that has appeared in the middle of the Soldiers Town Road? Nobody knows quite where it came from, but the police are looking into it. I know it's a, it's a corny story, it's an old joke, and I'm sure you've probably heard it before. I am only joking, there's no big hole that has appeared in the middle of the Soldiers Town Road beyond the normal potholes that are there. But if a large hole had appeared, it probably wouldn't be too long until there was a group of men gathered round it and looking into it. I wonder if you ever noticed that, that any time there's a large hole, or indeed if there's a man digging a hole, there's usually two or three other men leaning on spades or just gathered round looking into it. In a similar vein, I wonder have you ever had that experience where you notice a group of people looking at something, watching something, and you just can't help yourself. You're intrigued and you have to go over and see for yourself what it is that they're all looking at. It must have appeared a bit like that on the day of Jesus' ascension up into heaven. For anyone passing by the Mount of Olives on that day would have seen a group of 11 men gathered on the hillside looking at something. The 11 disciples were gathered together, gazing in bewilderment up into the sky. And anyone passing by may well have wondered just what they were looking at. Indeed, maybe they would have questioned, were they looking at something or were they looking for something? It wasn't immediately obvious to anyone just passing by. 
Now, Dr. Luke, who wrote the Acts of the Apostles, tells us that two other men did pass by and ask a question about just what was happening there. But these two men dressed in white, probably angels, well, they didn't ask about what the disciples were looking at or what they were looking for. They asked the question, why? Why were the disciples standing there gazing up into the sky? If we were to put it into Northern Ireland speak, it's as if the angel said to them, what are you using gawping at? That's a good Belfast word, isn't it? But the angels already knew the answer to that question. They already knew that the disciples were looking at where they had seen Jesus ascend into heaven. And the angels went on to explain to them that Jesus, who had been taken up into heaven, would one day return in the same way. In Luke's Gospel, he says that Jesus will return one day in clouds and great glory. But the implication is that the disciples standing there on the hillside on that day are really looking in the wrong place. Their focus is misdirected. The implication of the angel's question is really that the disciples now need to refocus their gaze. And rather than just looking intently up into the sky, they now need to turn their focus in different directions. First of all, we might say that they need to look backwards. They need to look back and remember the time that Jesus had spent with them here on earth. In verses 1 and 2 of Acts chapter 1, Luke talks about the things that Jesus began to do and to teach until the day that he was taken up into heaven. In verse 3, he refers to all the proofs that Jesus had given to his resurrection. And so he's really implying that Christ's followers need now to remember those things by looking backwards, by calling them deliberately to mind, by living out Christ's teachings, and by starting to share them with others. Then secondly, they, they need to look inwards because according to verses four and five, Jesus had promised that the Holy Spirit would come to dwell in the disciples, to equip them and to build them up for service within Christ's kingdom, to send them out as messengers with the good news of the gospel. And also the disciples are called to look outwards when they were equipped by the Spirit, they would be sent out as witnesses, beginning in Jerusalem, Jesus had said, but then even beyond those boundaries to Judea and Samaria and the very ends of the earth. And yes, they are still called to look upwards, to look upwards in confident expectation of Christ's return. So what does all of this have to say to us? Well, I think it gives us cause to consider whether we're actually looking in the right direction. It's been said often in recent weeks that because of this coronavirus pandemic, the world will probably never be the same again. Only time will tell whether that's the case, whether it turns out to be true or not. It would be very easy once normality resumes, for us to just slip back into the same old ways. But it's almost as if we've been given an opportunity at present, an opportunity to pause, to reflect, to reconsider, and in many ways to refocus, recenter on the things that are really important. I could go further and say it's almost as if God has been forcing us to stop, to slow down, and to think about things more carefully, to back down from the rat race of modern life, and to refocus and reconsider on those important things, just to see if we as individuals and as a society are focusing in the right place. So let's take the positive viewpoint and say that God's giving us an opportunity to refocus our gaze.
Perhaps God is giving us the opportunity, firstly, to look backwards and to remember his goodness to us in the past, to remember his mercy and his compassion and his forgiveness to us as individuals and as a society over many generations, to remember the good news of God's saving grace extended to us, and remember the many times that God has brought us through difficult times, to recognise that all that we are and all that we have ultimately comes from him. Secondly, perhaps God is giving us an opportunity to look inwards and to recognise our own dependence on his provision for our daily bread, for every breath that we take, for the very life that we have. All those things that we so often take for granted, as we look inwardly, we realise that ultimately they come as a gift from God. And looking inward, we consider what's important in life and we consider our own standing with God. Thirdly, we have an opportunity to look outwards, perhaps with greater love and compassion for those around us. And of course, beyond that even, to the wider world. One of the most positive things that seems to be happening during this coronavirus pandemic is that people genuinely are treating others better. We're more considerate of the needs of others. We're more willing to volunteer, perhaps, and more willing to reach out to others to help, more appreciative of the things that other people do for us, the things on which we depend. But even more than that, we want to look outwards in a way that will share God's love and God's mercy and God's grace with others, to extend his compassion to others, to speak to others about God's saving power in a way that will share the good news and see others drawn into his kingdom and into a saving relationship with Christ. And yes, of course, we're called to look upwards. We're called to lift our eyes to God in recognition that our help comes from the Lord, as it says in Psalm 121, or to set our minds on things above rather than on things below, as it says in Colossians chapter 3, or to think about the things that are true and noble, pure, lovely, admirable, all those positive aspects, as it says in Philippians chapter 4. We're called to look upwards, to lift our gaze to God, to recognise our own need for him and to live in that same confident expectation that the disciples had, the confident expectation of the return of Christ. So in all these ways, by looking backwards and inwards and outwards and upwards, we're called to turn our eyes to God. And just possibly during this coronavirus pandemic, God is forcing us, or at the very least giving us the opportunity to pause, to slow down, to reflect, and to turn our focus back to him. May we do so with the eyes of faith. Amen.
throughout the 10 days between Ascension, which was last Thursday, and Pentecost next Sunday. Our diocese has asked every parish to hold a special focus on 10 days of prayer. 10 days when we pray specifically for God's work to be done and God's kingdom extended within our community. And so we're doing that each day. And I would encourage you to use the prayers that are on our parish Facebook page or to just set time aside when you can pray specifically for the different things that are mentioned there in your personal prayers to focus on this 10 days of prayer to see God's kingdom extended in our society. As we turn to God in prayer today, the diocese have provided some video material in which different church leaders from other churches and denominations in our local area lead us in prayer and indeed pray for us as a church as we share in partnership together. So I'm going to lead the Lord's Prayer and the Collect of Ascension and then the video will continue with prayers from other church leaders. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And the Collect of the Sunday After Ascension O God, the King of glory, you have exalted your only Son, Jesus Christ, with great triumph to your kingdom in heaven. Mercifully give us faith to know that, as he promised, he abides with us on earth to the end of time, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And our prayers continue with prayers from the various church leaders. Good morning to everyone in the diocese. I've been given the privilege of leading you in prayer. Lord God, as the season of Pentecost approaches, we remember your fire came upon the apostles gathered together in one place. We remember that fire burns inwardly. Lord, please warm the hearts of all your people in this diocese. Kindle the flame of sacred love in every heart and may we all be consumed by your grace and goodness, truth and holiness. Fire also travels upwardly. Come afresh, Lord, upon every parish. Release worship and adoration. May relationship with the living flame triumph over ritual and routine. And lastly, fire extends outwardly. Lord, just as the flames spread, Remind us of the importance of outreach. Forgive us when we become parochial and insular, rather than kingdom-focused and outward-looking. Give us a vision for this island home and much further afield, that countless millions will come to know Jesus as Saviour and Lord. Wind of the Spirit, fan the living flame. Lord, send your fire. Amen. Lord, we thank you that in this time, with so much bad news, we're also hearing good news stories about community coming together to support one another. Lord, make us, your people, supernaturally equipped to love our neighbours as we love ourselves. Father God, we give you thanks for every person who's serving our community as a key worker. Medical staff and shelf stackers, emergency services and couriers, farmers and postal workers, God, give them your protection, give them energy, give them resilience. And Lord, for those who find themselves unemployed or set aside, we ask you to protect their minds from depression and despair. May the safety net of our society catch them and may they find their sense of identity and worth and purpose in you. 
Amen. And Lord Jesus, I ask for your blessing on this particular branch of your family, the church, the Diocese of Down and Dremore. Mould them and shape them. Empower them to be everything that you are calling them to be. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we take time today to pray for the churches across the island of Ireland. We pray your strength and wisdom to fill each leader, pastor and minister. We lift the diocese of Down and Remore to you specifically today and ask for blessing and wisdom in every leader and especially for Bishop David and his family at this time. These are precarious times that we're living in and we can no longer lead from our old ways, memories or traditions. We need a fresh imagination to lead our people well and more importantly, ears to hear what the Spirit is saying to the church in these days. We pray against COVID-19 and any other thing that would bring sickness and hindrance to the advancement of your kingdom. May your people rise with fresh power. May the Holy Spirit refresh and renew and baptize us all over again. May your church rise out of this pandemic with a fresh confidence and strengthen you renewed and refined. We know that it's not by might, nor is it by strength, but it's by my spirit, says the Lord. And we thank you that you're building your church and the gates of hell cannot and will not prevail against it. Thank you that according to Ephesians 1, 4, that we've been chosen in Christ before the foundation of the world, chosen for such a time as this. These things we pray in the mighty and powerful name of Jesus. Amen. The Lord bless you. Father, your son Jesus, anointed with the Holy Spirit and with power, went about everywhere doing good. He showed care for the needy. He healed the sick, curing all kinds of diseases. He delivered those held captive by any sort of bondage. Be with your church. Anoint us with the Holy Spirit and with power. Strengthen us to pursue the mission of Jesus today. Give us caring hearts that we may show compassion to the afflicted. Let us not think of what we lack, but of the good we can do for those who are suffering in mind, heart, soul, or body. Lighten your children's burdens. Be their refuge in trials, their strength in sickness, their comfort in sorrow. May they experience your loving kindness through us. It is where brothers and sisters are united that you give your blessing. May we pursue life's journey together. Join in integrity of faith and unite in the bond of love all those whom one spirit has consecrated. Upon your faithful people of the Church of Down and Remore, who have been fervently united in prayer, animated by holy hope throughout these past weeks, send forth anew your Holy Spirit. May your love be poured into their hearts. May they be one. May we all be one, so that the world may believe. And we conclude our prayers by praying for one another in the words of the grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen.
Nikomov.